The process of NAT, or network address translation, is one where a router or a firewall or some other type of layer 3 address will take an IP address and it will convert that IP address and send the packet on its way. We very often see this as a one-to-one -one NAT, where if traffic is going to a specific IP address from a specific IP address, that particular address would be changed. That conversion obviously is always going to take place at layer three. There's also a situation where we might want to convert many different IP addresses to a single address. That is something we often see called PAT. This may also be referred to as source NAT. This is where we're taking perhaps a large number of devices, and any of those devices that might be communicating out to the internet, for instance, we're going to change the source address from all of those devices to look like it's coming from one single IP address from our network. This is something that is very commonly done if you have a home office or a home router all of your IP addresses in your house are going to be private IP addresses. And as that traffic goes through your local router, that router is going to perform a PAT to translate those addresses from your internal private addresses to one single public IP address for your ISP. There's also a type of NATing called a static NAT. Some people also refer to this as a destination NAT. This is the reverse of that last scenario I mentioned. These are for people that are out on the network that may be communicating inbound into servers that you might have in your private network. So they are sending traffic to an outside IP address, and your router has to NAT that traffic so that it finally will make its way onto the server that's in your internal network. Let's look at both of these scenarios. A port address translation, or PAT, is one where we have all of these workstations on the inside. Here's a 192.168.3.22, 192.168.1.221, 192.168.1.3. These are all private networks. They're all behind our internet router. And nobody here has a public IP address. These IP addresses cannot communicate. They are non-routable on the internet. So what we've configured is a NAT inside of our internet router that says if anybody is communicating from any source IP address, change their source IP address to 66.20.1.12. And it's going to keep a table inside of this router. The reason it's called a port address translation is because usually you must also change port numbers that are being sent from these source addresses. Otherwise, you may have conflicts because every one of these is going out a single IP address. There's a translation table that is created inside of this router or this firewall that is performing the NAT, and it keeps every everything straight. It knows that 192.168.3.22 is communicating out. And here's the translation between its original IP address and port number, and now the new IP address and the new port number that's going to be used for that source address. A static NAT is when traffic is going the other direction. There may be devices out here on the internet that need to communicate to these servers. We might have a web server, and we might have an email server inside of our network. And we need to configure our firewall or our router, whatever's doing the NAT for us, so that if anybody is communicating inbound, and they're communicating over 66.20.1.14, that's the destination, I want to change the destination IP address if they're running port 80. So if this is port 80 traffic on the inbound, that means they need to go to our web server. I'm going to change the destination IP address to 192.168.3.22. And it keeps a translation table so that when that web server is sending information back out, it's going to re-NAT that to the 66.20.1.14 address. Now, if inbound traffic is going to that same IP address, but it's inbound to a different port number, we can also configure another NAT rule that says, statically, I want to take anything inbound on port 25 and send it to our email server that happens to be at 192.168.1.3. So even though you have people communicating to a single IP address, the static NAT or destination NAT functionality means that we can pick out individual port numbers and send that traffic to the appropriate server that's needed for that service. That way, we can keep our web server inside of our firewall. We can keep our email server inside of our firewall. And we can can simply facilitate those communications by setting up NATs right here on our external device.